Um, if anyone here is happily married, anyone here happily married? It's unbelievable. I mean, it truly is unbelievable when looked at in the context of world history, because the notion that we would be not only married but happily married is only roughly dates back to around the middle of the 18th century. Until then, you tolerated your partner for the sake of dynastic concerns and children. You did not expect to love them. A very new idea was born in the middle of the 18th century that historians call romanticism. And we are all the heirs of romanticism. The way that human beings love is very context and society dependent. You know, there's a lovely quote by La Rochefoucauld. There are some people who would never have fallen in love if they hadn't heard there was such a thing. Slightly too cynical. <laughs> but really what this is alerting us to is that the way we love is very dependent on our societies. And nowadays, we love romantically. We are all the heirs of romanticism. And romanticism is a very particular ideology, and it's worth just running through some of its dominant features. Romanticism tells us that all of us have a soulmate out there, and it's our task to identify the soulmate. When we meet the soulmate, we will feel a very special feeling uh, and a kind of instinctive attraction to this person, and we will know they are our destiny. We might be in a bar, in a nightclub, in a train. We will have that special feeling. And then we'll call up our friends, and we go, I've had that special feeling at last. That's terrific. And so everyone around us will have that special feeling, and then they'll get married and have children. And if you don't have the special feeling, you get very worried. You go on Tinder, Match.com, and you're always waiting for the special feeling, special feeling to come along until the soulmate comes along. And um, the, the good thing about finding a soulmate, when we eventually find the soulmate, we will never be lonely again. All of us, everything that we are, will be perfectly understood by another human being. It will mean the definitive end of any sense of alienation or loneliness. All our feelings, our hopes, will be confirmed by another person. So it's really terrific news. Um, <laughs> When the soulmate comes along, we will have no more secrets. They will understand us totally, and we will understand them. And there's that lovely you know, early days when everything that you can uh, possibly think of of feeling ashamed or vulnerable, you can reveal this to another person, and they will confirm you and bolster you, and that's terrific. The other thing that romantics very much believe in is that love and sex go together. So previously, people obviously had sex and had been in love. They didn't necessarily always see them as entirely could join. But uh, uh, romantics believe that sex is the ultimate expression of love, which is why in the 19th century, adultery becomes a tragedy and becomes the most important theme of 19th century novels. All the great novels of the 19th century are, in one way or another, about adultery, starting with Emma Bovary, uh, Madame Bovary, and Anna Karenina, and on and on. Because suddenly, the reason why suddenly adultery is a disaster is because the romantics have made sex into a proof, the ultimate proof of love. As you will have gathered from my tone, I'm not an unalloyed fan of romanticism. I believe that it has caused us immense trouble. In fact, I believe that romanticism is the single greatest enemy we face.